And what I saw at my funeral was like, it was devastating. It was at the moment where my friends had walked in and I saw my, my, my parents, my family, my, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, my sister all get up and they started fighting my friends. And uh, the angel actually asked me, said, is this what you want to be remembered for? Warning, warning. As a medical doctor, I must inform you that there are side effects to this coaching session. Beware. It may enhance your self-esteem, cause you to experience vibrant health, encounter long-term weight loss, heal damaged relationships. Warning, there are side effects to this coaching session. It may increase your enthusiasm for life and bring about hope. It may cause you to have productive and optimistic thinking. It could even help you not allow messed up people to ruin the rest of your life and help you realize the masterpiece that you are and empower you to be the boss of your brain. Warning! These side effects may be long-term. This is Dr. Isabel from DrOnAMission.com. John, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Great. Welcome aboard. I want to ask you, where are you calling in from? I am calling from Toronto, Ontario, up in Canada. Mm -hmm. And how's the weather? Hot and humid, just the way I like it. Yeah. Oh man. I am so, I really would love to have that kind of weather. I'm in New Zealand and it is cold and I'm waiting for spring. Well, when you guys have uh summer, we have huh, minus 20. I know. And you get so much snow. Uh, it's been good. Uh, last couple of years, it's actually been pretty good. Like we haven't had that much snow. Like we, normally we would get dumped on, uh, it's normal for us to get about, I don't know, maybe 10, 10 to 15 centimeters of snow in one, in one day. So over the winter, it's, it can, it can pile up to maybe like a meter, but we've been lucky over the last couple of years. It's been pretty good. Nice. And are you a skier? No. Are you a cross country skier? No. Are you a snowshoer? I am not anything that has to do <laughs> anything with winter. <laughs> I get you. I totally understand. Hey, listen, why don't I share a little with our listeners who you are and where you're coming from and invite you everybody in on the MD and chef team. Uh, go right ahead. Go right okay. ahead. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the MD and chef team. I'm your host, Dr. Isabel. And we have today with us, John Katsavos. Did I say that correctly? Katsavos? Yes, you did. How do you say it? That's a voice, but everybody here in Canada and North America pronounce it Katsavos, so you're bang on. Katsavos, <laughs> and where, what nationality is that? Greek. Greek, I love it. Great. I actually thought you were a little Spanish, but I totally see the Greek. <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit about John, and then we'll go into his story, because he's got a really special story that I want to share, that I want him to share with us. To, to give everybody hope. John is a professional personal trainer for 13 years and has dealt with depression and suicidal thoughts in his past. I get that space, John. And you know, I applaud you for, for speaking it out because we really need to, to talk more, you know, about the elephant in the living room. So thank you for doing that. So he's taught, he, he'll be talking to us about that. And he's created a system that has been proven out over a decade to help people not only lose weight and feel better about themselves, but to be able to make lifelong changes in their lives, which is so important. We need long lasting changes, you know, not just a, a weekend change. And then we go back to the regular way we were. In that time, he has become a certified health counselor, acquired Jumpstart Mat, learned the RTS system. What does RTS stand for? Resistance Training Specialist. Mm, building that muscle. Right? Understand how to, how, understand how to manipulate it properly. Ooh, 
great. A fitness kickboxing coach, Kapow, LVL2, avid Sistema practitioner, and we'll hear about that, I'm sure, and is looking to become a certified instructor. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. What time is it there right now for you? It is 8.36 in the evening. PM on Monday. Yes. Yes, well, it is 12.36 New Zealand time, uh, Tuesday. So let me just let you know, Tuesday's a good day. Okay, great. I love yeah. Tuesdays. <laughs> so, John, you've had a, a rough ride. And um, you've come through over on the other side. And do you mind just sharing where it all began and, and just share your journey with us, if you don't mind? Uh, sure. Um, I've always been a believer, even from high school, that I never really fitted in with the crowd. I was always the, uh, like, uh, I grew up in the 90s in high school. So I was like in the grunge phase when everybody was in, you know, the dance and the Euro stuff. I was, I was always the, the outcast. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, in right when I graduated high school and I finished uh, college, uh, which was community college, uh, I got a little lost and uh, I found a job at working as a security guard. And, you know, I was doing pretty good for myself uh, for a security guard back in the, you know, late nineties, early 2000s, well, late nineties, I was doing really good for myself and um, everything started to fit in finally for me up until Christmas Eve when uh Two of the two of my guards, like I was a shift supervisor at that time, was a young guy, young kid. I was in my mid twenties, such a young pup, and um, two of my guards decided to go to a client's uh, office and make coffees for themselves after hours. Mm. And my supervisor found out about it because the client complained because they're missing two two coffee. They're missing coffees. So needless to say, I lost my job because of it. Um, at that point in time, like I said, I was doing very well for myself. I was doing, I had a car that I should not have had uh, back in the day. It was, you know, really nice sports car. I was thinking about uh, moving out on my own. Uh, I put my, I was put, I put myself back into university so I can get a better education and but when I lost that, when I lost my job, I lost everything. I almost lost my car. I got stuck in my parents. I uh, got stuck in my parents' basement because uh, I couldn't afford to move out. There was no money coming in. Uh, I dropped out of university because I couldn't afford to continue. And I found out that all my friends were talking behind my back, even when I was doing, even you know, becoming quote unquote successful in my early twenties, which is quite unfair of how we have labeled when people should be successful. Mm -hmm. I agree. So um, needless to say, I was in a very bad space because that was the first time that I had lost everything and I didn't know how to handle it. So I literally, I locked myself in my, in my bedroom basement apartment for an entire year. And the tipping point was uh, when uh, I went out for a walk and the walk was on, on purpose. I walked to the nearest bridge and I was standing on it and I was planning. I was looking at the cars coming over the highway or freeway or whatever you want to call it, motorway. Mm -hmm. And I was judging how fast the cars are going to come so that when I jump, I can hit a car before I hit the ground. So I can make sure that my story is over. Mm -hmm. I was... 25 at the time yeah 25 mm -hmm. and that's when you know christians out there you know we have we all say that we have our guardian angels the muslims even say that we have guardian angels um that's when my guardian angel came to me and he literally showed me my funeral and what i saw at my funeral was like it was devastating. It was at the moment where my friends had walked in and I saw my, my, 
my parents, my family, my, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, my sister, all get up and they started fighting my friends. And uh, the angel actually asked me, said, is this what you want to be remembered for? Wow. Wow. I was like, I was like no. Um, so then the angel took me and brought me to uh, the guy's car, the guy whose car I hit. And I saw the destruction that I, the, the destructive life that I left this poor man's life at. Mm. I left him in shambles. And then the angel again asked me, is this what you want to be remembered for? I'm like, no. See, I'm the type of guy that I can take whatever you dish at me. That's fine. I'm okay with it because I'm okay with it. But I don't like seeing other people suffer because of my actions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So... I was brought back to the, I was brought back to the bridge and the angel just looked at me and it just told me, well, it didn't look at me. I mean, I, I couldn't see it. The angel, like it could, I could feel it. Looking sure. At sure. Me. It was, yep, yep. Yeah. It was, and it told me, it goes, uh, you got a, you got a bigger purpose in life. Don't do this. Just keep going. Just keep fighting. Just keep moving. At the time I was in, I was a mess. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what, I don't know what this guy's, I don't know what this thing's telling me. I have no, I don't see <laughs> yeah, I know. Right what is, like, I'm going crazy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm like, all right, uh, all right. I'll, you know, one more chance, one more chance. And um, because I had, I didn't have a job. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have like, like I knew how to work out because I've been working out since I was 16 years old. So at that point, it was nine years. So I knew what to do, right? And how to, you know, home workouts and this and that. So I'm like, all right, let me do a little bit of workout here, a little bit of workout there, go for a walk here, go for a walk there. A couple of months roll by, I land a job as an armed guard, which by the way, I actually lied on my gun application so I can get the job. People, if you're depressed, I'm just a Disclaimer, if you're depressed, do not lie on the gun license. Just don't lie at all. <laughs> right. That, it's always a good idea not to lie. It's not a good idea not to lie. But I lied on the gun license because it, uh, where it said um, it asks you on the application uh, if you've ever had suicidal depression, if you've ever suffered from depression or suicidal thoughts, yes or no. I clicked no. <laughs> but I landed a job because of it. Uh, so, you know, I got some money coming in, uh, paid off a couple of debts and I started myself up, up to a gym and things started to go better. And I remember uh, one night when I was uh, coming back from the, from the, from the drop, which was the drop is where we drop off the money at the banks mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're going back to the shop with an tr empty truck. And I was sitting in the back with my messenger. Uh, the messenger is the crew chief. So he's like the supervisor of the crew, the three-man crew. <laughs> and um, I was like, a thought came into my head. The thought was, uh, he's not fast enough. My messenger was not fast enough for me pulling my gun out, putting it in my mouth and pulling the trigger. At that point, I told myself, I, that's, this is enough. I can't, I can't be thinking like this. This is not healthy for me. Uh, this is not right. This is not, I don't want to say it's not normal because it is normal to have these kinds of thoughts. However, it's what we do after what's, what's important. That's right. And what I did after was the next, the very next day when I woke up, I was signed up, I signed myself up to my local martial arts club. And that was the turning point for me where now I can find the proper tools that I can fall back on every time I slip because I do slip. I slip now. We all but do, John. We all do. Yeah. It's Today constant course correction. You know, it's constantly every moment. Exactly. And it's so 
that, that's 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 pretty much my story and it's like you know you know try this try that fail here fail there but again it's, like you said it's like course corrections right it's like okay this didn't work why didn't it work all right i feel crappy because of it and you know what it's okay to feel crappy about it don't live in the crap just live in it for a little bit and then get out that's right learn from your crap yeah why does this feel wrong? And what am I gonna do about it? So can I just circle back on a little bit about your story because that's an amazing story. And thank you so much for sharing that. You did a wonderful job. Um, I know oh, that that was, that was a lot of time and you did it in less than seven minutes. So <laughs> now let's go ahead and, you know, work it out <laughs> so right. let's talk let's talk about that year you were locked in your basement okay so i'm a mom my husband's a father we've got two daughters and if our kids are living in the basement and they're locked in there uh i'm i'm concerned what did your parents say what were they saying um they weren't saying anything they would constantly check in on me, obviously, right? They're, they're, they're loving parents. They, they love me because they love me, right? Um, but they were giving me my space for me to figure it out, which was important. And whenever I did say something to my mom, mostly my mom, um, she would always listen. She would always listen, but she was... Uh, I don't want to, she was, she's a hard, uh, she, she came from the school of hard knocks. Like at 13 years old, she was, she immigrated from Greece and she, from 13 years old, back in the sixties in, in Toronto, it's not like what it is today. Sixties in Toronto, people were very racist against white people mm -hmm. that were not Canadian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now things are much, much different. Mm -hmm. So my mom is a very, um, hard person when it comes to that, but she's also when it, but when it comes to her kids, like me and my sister, like she'll do, she'll, she'll move the world for us. And, um, it hurt her to know that I was in my room and I didn't leave. I only left my room to eat and to shower once a week. I didn't care how I looked. I didn't care how I felt. Mm. I, don't, I didn't care about how I, how, how I smelt. I didn't care about anything. I was, I was watching movies, playing video games. I was just like, just, just really just, I, I didn't know. care about movies. I didn't care about nothing, nothing. Yeah. And looking back, like I could see how it hurt her, but, and the fact that she was there to support whenever she, whenever I needed to the very rare occasion where I actually came out and said something, she was always there to listen, right. which was really good. Which is magnificent for parents. Just listening is very important. Did she ever want to take you to the doctor or anything? No, no, that wasn't in her DNA. Yeah, I get that. Hey, my mom, um, my mom and dad immigrated from Cuba two years before Fidel Castro took over in the fifties to Washington, DC. So, and mommy, you know, like I can never, I, I don't even, she's 96 years young living independently and really on top of her game for 96, but I can't ever share with her my, my, my attempts of trying to take my life because she just, she's like, no, you know, I've been through so much more and, you know, you just toughen up and just do what you got to do. And, and God will help you out. You know, you got to get closer to God. So anyway, I know that space and I'm glad that you, um, I'm actually glad that you went to the bridge because the angel showed up, your angel showed up. And as a Christian, I believe in guardian angels. I mean, it's all over the Bible, but we are covered in angels and Billy Graham in his book, the, the angels, I don't know if you've ever read that book, but the wonderful late Billy Graham, he talks about how God gives us angels, really good angels that are protecting us. So I'm glad your angels showed you your future, you know, the future, not only 
for your family, but also for that man or woman that was going to be affected by you committing, taking your life. Believe me. Um, there's a question that I asked my guests, uh, if you could go back, could, would you change anything? I no, I would, I want to go back to that bridge yeah. because that was one of the many, many turning points I've had in my life, many turning points. Yeah. So bravo oh. for, yeah, I thank you for sharing that because not too many people talk about their guardian angel. So thanks. No problem. It just makes it more normal. Yeah, there's angels out there and they're watching over you. And in the Bible, it says God appoints angels to his people. So somebody's praying. Your mom, your mom must have been praying for you. She may not have talked too much, but she must have been praying for you. I'm sure she was. I'm sure she was. And a praying mom is a powerful, powerful, powerful person. Absolutely. I totally, totally believe that. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to ask you a couple of things. Can you talk about the positive effects of exercise on the brain? Um, yeah. Um, I've in the past. Well, ever since high school, I've always been fascinated by, by exercise. Mm -hmm. So like well, my OAC year, th grade 13, uh, we do a lot. We did a lot of, uh, you know, positive stuff, you know, understanding the muscle and how it works. But something very interesting happens um, to your brain when you're exercising because of the amount of dopamine, serotonin. If you if you don't mind getting a, like really, really scientific. Take something. off. OK. And if I think that it's getting too scientific, I'll pull back and kind of paraphrase. OK. Because so that's just what I do. <laughs> <laughs> So basically what happens is that when, uh, when we exercise, there's a lot of dopamine and serotonin that gets dumped into our brain. And that is uh, like Paul check actually calls it the exercise is the drug of choice. So whenever you feel bad, whenever you feel down, uh, Jocko Wilnick says, if you, if you're, if you get tired, bust out 10 burpees, mm. guarantee you, you won't be tired after 10 burpees guarantee it and the reason why is because because the dopamine dump because of the serotonin dump because the cortisol dump that that happens uh in in uh in your muscle the in your muscles uh the atp the the, the atp uh, breakdown from the from muscle th synthesis and release of lactic acid it brings you up so you cannot feel bad after a workout before a workout, even I feel bad. I, Me there's too. Days, yeah, there's <laughs> days where it's like, I'm not working out. I'm not working out. And there's an old bodybuilding adage. When, the, when you don't feel like working out, work out. Even when you're sick? Yes. However. However. Not as intense. Mm -hmm. When you're sick. People have mis mistaken of a workout as a 90 minute or 60 minute or 30 minute bust out, break into a break into sweat. That is completely false. Standing up from lying down and, li and going from a stand up position to a laying down position, that could be considered a workout because you're using your muscles in order for you to stand up mm -hmm. and lay back down. Mm -hmm. If you're sick, and I've written blog posts about this, like galore. If you're sick, just the fact, just just the movement of standing up and laying back down, going for a walk around your house, that's exercise because you're applying force to your body, regardless of what that force is. Okay. You're, so any form of resistance on the muscle mm -hmm. to control the joint from falling apart that can be considered an exercise. Thank you. Because <laughs> there have been, it's winter here, okay? And you know how winter goes. You start getting a few viruses here and there. Even, even the fearless leader of the MD and chef team gets a little kapow from viruses. So 
I do feel guilty in my mind because uh, normally I, I go for like an hour walk and it's it's like a power punch walk. It's I'm walking late as if I'm late for an appointment and then I'll do resistance, you know, or, you know, three times a week and then I'll do a hit or something. And I'll tell you, I, I just I can barely do a walk, you know, when you're feeling unwell. So thank you. You made my heart happy just by saying, <laughs> hey, going for a walk is good enough. Well, it is. And uh, that's one term that I actually really hate is well, many terms that I hate. Uh, one of them is cardio. Yeah, me too. It's, like, it's not cardio. It's resistance. If you really, if you really f look at the science behind a walk, when you apply force on the ground, if you had no friction to apply force with Newton's third law of motion, you would be going nowhere fast or potentially flat on your face, one of the two. Okay, well, we won't be doing that then. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and for men, because um, I haven't interviewed, you're the first male that I've interviewed for, that has overcome anxiety and depression and, um, and suicide thoughts. And so for men, it's different. You know, you, you guys are just wired differently. And I wanna know what's the importance of martial arts in a man's life? It's everything. Talk to me. Um, martial arts, martial, men go through different phases when they, when, they, when they enter martial arts. And the first phase is, it builds the ego. And, a, and if a man has an ego that has been uh, deplenished or uh, completely, completely removed, it's uh, it's game changing. Um, in Sistema, we talk about uh, the three phases, which is uh, in six months you learn you learn how to fight. Uh, between zero months, zero days, and six months, you learn how to fight. That's all you do. You just learn how to fight. Uh, up until two years or two two or three years, uh, you learn the physical part. Sorry, you learn the mental part of fighting. And then after you learn the spiritual part. So you're learning all three concepts, all three sides. So for a guy, um, for a guy to be able to get into martial arts, it, we, the, it teaches all three aspects of the, 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 exactly what a person needs of the physical, the mental, and the spiritual all into one little capsule takes time takes time to believe me i i dipped into the spiritual aspect i got scared like you can't even believe it was like you, no 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 <laughs> but when you because it builds such such amazing self-confidence especially in the first six months for a man that it's it's life-changing for them because they understand that what I have here is good enough. Forget about what the whole world is saying. The whole world might be saying, I'm not good enough, but I know that what I have here is good enough. And we drill down that confidence into that person, that, into that guy saying, yes, you are enough. You know what you're doing. You just gotta trust it, and that's one of the key. That that's one of the key um, learning points that we push in Sistema is that you already have the answers. Mm -hmm. You already know what to do. You just gotta trust that you know what to do and follow through. Yeah, for which sure. is another thing for guys is that we like we like things laid out for us. And we like to leave us alone and let us implement the plan. And that's another thing that martial arts does. It gives us a plan and it says, here it is. You know what to do. Trust that you know what to do. And just do it. And what exactly is martial arts? Like, what does that, what's the umbrella of martial arts? What does that encompass? Ooh. <laughs> like is that karate um tai chi i mean everything what is, well like everything. what what is it 
there's a physical aspect to martial arts, which is the fighting. And yeah, then yeah. there's the spiritual, uh, spiritual aspect of martial arts, which is um, connecting yourself to a greater purpose, connecting right. yourself and understanding that you are a part of that purpose. Yeah, but that shouldn't be scary, John. Because the God I know is all love and mercy and kindness, and it shouldn't be scary. So why is it scary for you? Because if you're not ready for it, it will whop you. If you're not ready for it, if you mm -hmm. tinker with it a little bit and you're not ready for it. Mm -hmm. And so do you know what your purpose is? Do you, do you know what your purpose is in here on, on this earth? I don't know yet. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't know. I think I'm, I think I'm doing it um, by trying to put this out to men and get them to understand that, you know, you're not alone in, in this world and other guys have been here before. Other guys are here that, that are, you know, in the process that you are. I think I am. I think I'm doing my purpose. Uh, I guess I'll know when I'm uh, on my deathbed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and are you working with other men that have gone through what you've gone through? Uh, I'm a part of uh, I'm a part of uh, a couple of uh, men's groups to help Great. me with all this stuff. So yeah, um, excellent. I'm I'm trying to build my my platform, but it's uh, uh, it's a work it's, in progress, isn't it? It's a, it can be a challenge. It can be a challenge. Yeah, yeah, but, it definitely is a challenge. But. I think the fact that, you know, I finally have the, the, the blueprint to do it and my why I've understand, I've understood my why Good. I think it, I think it's, I think this is my purpose. Good. Good. And you know, it's, it's just all, it's just step by step by step. And look, when we fall, we get back up and talking about fail, you know, talking about falling, let's talk about failures. Have you had a few failures? Whew. I've yeah, had I some know. doozies. <laughs> and, and have you learned anything from your failures? Yes. Yeah, I learned, I learned quite a bit from my failures. Um, the first failure was uh, the first time I started VO Fitness. Um, I had no idea what I was doing for business. No clue whatsoever. And I went on my own as a personal trainer and I'm doing like a million different things. I got up to a thousand dollars a month and I was like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I got my, I got me a business. And in three months I lost it. <laughs> um, I went back to personal training again, uh, picked it up. Um, I, Branched off on my own. I was signed up. Uh, I joined a big box gym here in Toronto and uh, branched off on my own, started my own little thing. I actually got my own studio at that point, And I found who I thought was I was going to spend the rest of my life with. And that was another big whopper because when I lost my business, uh, the landlord, just being a landlord, I'm not going to mm -hmm. say that he was bad or good. He was just mm -hmm. being a landlord. Mm -hmm. And when the money went, so did she. So. Mm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, you know, better oh, now, no. better now. Yeah, I know. I know. We, I know. But during the process, it hurts. But now that you're over on the other side it's just oh wow i'm glad i'm i'm glad i had that experience then instead of much later with kids on board a house a mortgage blah 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 and the yeah. right person will show up if she does she does yeah i'm very happy with how i am i mean <laughs> we could always be happier um and that's another thing that i've learned over 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 the years is that yeah, like no matter how happy you you no matter no matter how happy that you think you are you could you're always feeling that you could be more happier so it's like dog chasing the tail kind of thing right and just learning how to be in the moment and appreciating the moment right now right now i'm talking to john 
all the way from Canada, sharing our story. And before I land this plane, do you have three action steps that our listeners could benefit right away, have a quick win? A uh, quick win is yeah. simple. Uh, Good. It, it, these are simple, 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 simple things. Um, get out in nature and walk. Does it make a difference if it's minus 40 outside or <laughs> plus 40 outside? Bundle up or dress down a little bit, but not to the point where you're going to get arrested. Get out in nature. Enjoy nature for what Mother Nature has to offer you, and that is life itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Step number one. Step number two, drink more water. The more water you drink, the less sugary stuff that you're going to put into your body. And the less sugar that you do, the more this clears up. And step number three, be kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. if you so can't, good. If, if you can't love yourself, no one in this world will be able to love you. So learn to love yourself. Be kind to yourself. Um, allow yourself the leeway to watch something funny once in a while or you know, something. Just do something nice for yourself because you're you. You're unique. You're, you're unique and going down the path of just being serious 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 is you don't want to go down there because i've been no. there before it's yeah not joy fun. lots of joy hey it's okay to have a good joy blast every day whatever you gotta do laugh laugh, laugh yeah well, yeah whatever hook you up, need to do hook up with friends and spend the day with friends reminisce yeah. over good times yeah it's okay it's okay so can you tell us what you're offering everybody um, I have, uh, right now the 12 week fat sizzler. Ooh. Yeah. Ha like what, like body fat. What are we talking about? Getting your body fat down to 3% or something. No. No. <laughs> All right. Well, we want to do a disclaimer on this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't like talking about like transformations of people. Um, because everything is so unique and every human being out there is unique. Your journey, the journey is more important than the destination, mm -hmm. but the 12 week fat sizzler, what I do is, um, 12 week weight loss program for men and women. First I had it for men, but I'm like, you know what? I need women in this too, because we need the nice balance between, you know, male and female. So I'm like, let's throw, let's. Put, bring women into um we do the workouts uh i focus more on the paleo diet because the paleo diet for me is probably the most effective effective way for us humans to be eating it goes down to our real roots which okay. are caveman days okay um three three calls with me One's a keynote call with me. One's a workshop and one's a personal one-on-one -on -one call. Uh, I do heavily, heavily focus on the mindset because doing this for professionally for 13 years and working out for the past 30 years, I've noticed that people who don't have a proper mindset when it comes to workouts, they will, they will bang it out for 21 days and then see you later absolutely so i do heavy 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 mindset exercises morning routines evening routines affirmations you name it absolutely proper thought management is so important and how do people get in contact with you for the 12 weeks of uh, fat sizzler um you can go to my website vofitness.ca vo fitness uh, yeah viofitness.ca dot ca yeah for, for on, canada yeah i'm so clever so v uh v i o fitness dot ca okay great um i plast i plaster it everywhere uh facebook especially linkedin on my podcasts the fitness oracle you can listen to the Fitness Oracle on Spotify, iTunes. You can watch YouTube. it on YouTube. 
wherever you stitcher wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts i'm there um uh, there's a link with all my episodes so you can get it's a it's a it's a free one hour call with me so we can identify the one point that you are missing and that we can hit right right now so that you can uh you can start taking charge of your life because because you need to people need to become the ceo of their life yes yes yeah. or else or else you'll be like a paper cup in the wind in the parking lot just blowing Absolutely. from here to there and then when you land you know what it'll look like when they're 70 years old going how did i get here well it was your choice because we all have choices right yep yeah yep i'm sorry that's just a kapow because i'm 61 going wait a minute i'm doing the rest of my life as the best like i'm living to 120 that's just my decision <laughs> That's my decision. Hey, so so it says here you got the twelve week fat sizzler and a free one hour call to find out your pain point and how to help. So how do they get that? Like I don't have the link for that. I can send you the link. Um, okay, it's just good. the calendly calendly link. You just oh, book it. I do have the calendly link. Okay, so when they go onto the calendly link and book for the one hour free call, then they'll get you talking to them and then you'll talk to them about the 12 week fat sizzler right yeah did i yeah. did i get that right yeah oh yay <laughs> okay yay happy snoopy dance okay listen thank you so much for your time john you've been wonderful and thank you for sharing your journey it's still i know that you're going to positively impact and inspire millions of people with your story and help them get through that dark space Thank you. I'm actually just going for one. One what? One person. Yeah, yeah, I know. But you know, you know what it's good. I'm just a big talker. I'm a, I want to help know. heal the world before I go to bed forever. <laughs> All right, John. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. And thank you, everyone, for coming and joining us on the MD and Chef team with John and I. Have a wonderful day and remain unstoppable. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.